Hello, I'm Elliot Chapman, aka Ben Jackson 2.0, and you're watching Dr. Freedom. Okay, let's get this wingding started. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Freedom, of course, as you know, and I'm sitting here tonight with Elliot Chapman. Um, and you've stepped into the role of uh, Ben Jackson, who was a character on way back, you know, I think started off with the Hartnell era. That's right. And was partially into the Troughton, wasn't he? Yes, um, uh, Mike, and who joined at the same time as Annika Wills as Polly, they, they started um, on the, oh, got to get my knowledge now. I think it's the, the third to last, so the anti-penultimate Hartnell, and they went right through almost to the end of Troughton's first season. So they did, uh, uh, I think, about a year. I know, it's kind of sad, too, because a lot of those adventures are missing, so... Yeah, which <laughs> made it really easy to research, you know, but mm -hmm. thankfully everything exists on Sam. So what I ended up doing when I got the part was um, uh, getting the, uh, I was sent the War Machines, which exists in its entirety. Um, but I thought, I, I think I need a bit more than this. I need to sort of delve further. And I ended up getting um, most of the stories on audio because although the soundtracks exist, I mean, that's something, thank, thank heavens, because uh, there'll be absolutely nothing. And of course, the power of the Daleks came in useful recently with the animation of that, because I, I, I was sent that, and it was, it was just a nice little extra thing to have in the, uh, the toolkit, really. <laughs> so you, were you Hoovian before all this, or? It, it, well, um, it's in a sort of circuitous route, really, because when I was a kid, um, I sort of caught the end of the original series. Um, so we're talking Colin and Sylvester. I was very young, um, but I remember it really sort of burnt its way onto my childhood imagination because it really wasn't, visually, it wasn't like anything else on television in the UK at the time. Um, and in the early 90s, as I was feeling a bit older growing up, uh, they repeated, the BBC this is, they repeated earlier stories. So although they weren't making anything new, they were at least, I guess, showing stuff from um, the older. So I had a sort of diet of it. And then it was away for such an awfully long time that I got into other things. And, um, but certainly when the revival happened with Russell T's version and um, Christopher Eccleston, Billy, although I was sort of in my 20s by that point, um, I dipped back in. But it's always sort of been there. And... Um, Certainly since getting the Ben gig and doing the Ben research, I have to confess, I've, I've been watching quite a bit of classic Doctor Who because I just got into it. Um, people started to send me stuff and I went back to watch the things that I watched as a kid, but also started to watch things from all eras. So I'm, yeah, I'm definitely, I've definitely been bitten by the bug, I think. I don't know if that helps, but... <laughs> <clears throat> is there any particular doctor you find to be a favorite it, it's it's an interesting question because i think the thing about being an actor is i think one of the things i really really love is how different actors do the same part it's why i've seen 30 hamlets in my life or why i've uh, you know I, I quite like how so how different people approach things it can change i mean i've got an enormous fondness for Colin and Sylvester because I, they were my doctors when I was a kid but at the same time I think it's been fascinating to engage with Trout and stuff I think he, he was an incredibly gifted actor and I've seen um, his sons on the stage and his grandson on the stage I mean they really are a family that makes me believe it might be hereditary they're so talented but recently I've been watching some Peter Davison stories and when I first started watching his stories, I thought, I don't know, Peter Davison doesn't seem to have that otherworldly thing or that any, but he's more like the guy next door than the guy from another planet. And yet, I've been constantly amazed with the things he keeps pulling out. And I think, okay, right, so you're not an obviously alien looking character actor. 
but you've got all these qualities that you do. So I'm really enjoying him at the moment, but you know, next week it'd be someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been keeping up with the modern series or? Um, yes, I, uh, I've got a slightly, uh, it's very odd. I, I seem to be more like the classic series at the moment with the modern series. When it came back, it was a really big deal um, over here because it had been off so long and the BBC really publicised it. And I watched that Eccleston year really avidly uh, and enjoyed it very much. Um, afterwards, the problem is that the BBC, in their infinite wisdom, decided to show it in the summer months. And having sort of been satiated by this really exciting return, I, I did wander away. Um, so there's an awful lot of tenants I've not seen. I've seen virtually none of the Matt Smith era. I think I've seen about two episodes. But because I got the Ben part almost around the time that Capaldi took over, I thought, oh, I, I better keep up with this. Um, and I've enjoyed a lot of what he's done, actually. I think it's been some really good stuff. Okay, so it must have been amazing when you got that phone call saying, look, you know, we'd like you to come in and test for this particular character. Well, it went in a strange way, Matt, because um, I was on, I was, I had just come off the stage, I was doing a theatre show, and, and I went into the dressing room, and there was an email waiting for me from Big Finish, um, saying, we'd like to offer you this part. So it wasn't even a test. There was no audition. It was, we'd like to offer you this part. And I thought, well, why have they come to me? Because I'm not the most high profile actor in England <laughs> to say the least. Um, and what I found out was there had been some desire to maybe look into the possibility of recasting some of the companions. They were very tentative about it because of course they didn't want to step on anyone's toes, audience, I mean that. Um, but they'd gone through, apparently the story, as I understand it, is they went through hundreds of radio showreels of actors. And it just so happened that I, one of the pieces on my radio showreel was playing this London boy, this Cockney boy, in a play called Love and Money by Dennis Kelly. And um, Louisa Bowerman and David Richardson went, oh, that's the closest we've heard to Mike. So that was quite, so in a way, part of the job was done for me because they said, you've got a similar kind of cadence and rhythm when you do that accent, as Mike did when he played Ben in the 60s. So that made things a lot easier. So what was the audition kind of like? Did they go bring you in, they give you some material and? Well, th there was none. It was, it was, there was none? Yeah. Okay, so they just brought you in and said, okay, we'd like you to have the job. Yeah, we've heard your showreel. We've gone through a, a number of actors' showreels trying to, find someone who sounds close to him uh, as he was originally, you're the man. And I was like, oh, great. So there really was nothing beyond that. I just turned up on the first day and tried to, well, you know, by that point, I'd gone back and, and, and checked out some of Mike's stories to sort of finesse it a bit. Um, but I, as far as I'm aware, no one else was in the running. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a little strange though that first you know few days when you're coming in uh, uh do you remember what it was like the atmosphere when you came in to record your first story you know replacing ben, you know as ben jackson or stepping in yeah i mean it's an interesting one because on one hand actors usually accept that they will play the part that another actor has established i mean i've played many parts that have been established by other actors um, on the stage or um, you know, in other radio things. Um, this is slightly different because uh, there's a very passionate and protective audience. Um, so although the fan audience wasn't in my mind in the days we recorded, the one thing I was slightly anxious about was Annika Wilson, Fraser Hines worked with Mike. He probably was a close friend as well as a colleague, which I found out was the case. So I was a little bit anxious about sort of getting it right in front of them and not coming in as the new boy, sort of swinging his weight around or, uh, or not treating it with the, um, the deference it deserved. And, you know, kind of uh, 
making the whole thing a bit awkward. But actually, the wonderful thing about it was Annika and Fraser were incredibly welcoming. They sort of knew, they detected that that was on my mind, <laughs> that I would have been worried about. And they were incredibly welcoming. But, you know, they, they're professionals and that's what they do. They, they are the leads in this range. Any actors who come in, whether it's me or the guest actors that come in, they make them feel incredibly welcome and part of the team. Firstly, because of their professionality, also because they genuinely are nice people. So it, it, it became very easy after the first day. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, if there was any other character in the Hooniverse right now that's out there that you'd like to play, uh, which one would it be? On the top job. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured that would be the answer. I, I mean, there's no, I'm, I'm sure every actor in Britain. Um, Hobbits, that role it's the it's the greatest tv character that has ever been created in, 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 in uk television not yet. um and i think we've all probably got enough of an ego to think that we could <laughs> do something with it <laughs> i'd probably be appalling and you know but um it, but um yeah you know it, one of the exciting things sometimes when i get a big finish script is i'm I sit there and I, you know, I'm reading it, I'm reading out loud and I'm doing Ben and sometimes I'm reading the Doctor part with my bad version of Troughton, um, Troughton's voice, but sometimes, you know, I have this little sneaky moment where I go, oh, I might just try this, how would I do this line? And so, you know, of course it has to be that part. <laughs> Was there any uh, favorite story doing Ben, you know, that you really, you know, think stands out that you really like? Yes, Liz. Um, of the ones that are out, because we've, we've got a bit of a stockpile now um, of waiting to be released. Of those that have come out, uh, there was one that we did in the Companion Chronicles, um, the second Doctor Companion Chronicles called The Mouthless Dead. It's a very good script, but I think it was more that um, we'd sort of found our, our chemistry as, I mean, Annika and Fraser was already there because they, they had, you know, they went back to the 60s. But I just felt that we were all kind of working really well together. It was like we were, Fraser was able to sort of pick up on my thoughts or, or Annika was able to be, or I was, we, it all just started to feel that bit more effortless. The one I'm very much looking forward to is uh, one that's coming up in the first Doctor Chronicles, um, a, a, a Guy Adams script called The Plague of dreams which i'm not allowed to say much about except that it's the very they've all been good but this is the very best script i've ever had and it was a gift for me personally as an actor so it's got some really interesting stuff in there it's, it's full of these amazing twists my jaw was slack by the end of it so i'm really interested to know what fans of big finish and doctor in general will make of this particular story i've got a really good feeling about it uh, okay, so should be coming out soon then, huh? Uh, yes, they're actually bringing that one out in June. It's part of a set. Um, so there's going to be a story with Peter Burvis as Stephen and Maureen O'Brien as Vicky. And I've got two stories with uh, Annika, which is great because we thought at one point that they were not going to do Ben and Polly stories with the first Doctor, but they found a rather inventive way to do it. Um, of course we miss Fraser, but I'm back with Fraser and Annika next, week after next. So we're recording quite soon on a new one. Uh, okay. Well, that's all I had for you. Uh, we blazed right through them there. Uh, I just want to really thank you for coming on, giving us a little bit of your time. And, um, well, you know, I always really, really enjoy big finish stories. You know, I didn't get a chance to really, you know, watch a lot of the earlier stuff because when they aired them over here in the States, they started with, I think it was around Tom Baker. And then you know, they, they just jumped around all over the place. Like one second they're showing Davis and then they're showing Pertwee, then they're showing Colin. Then they jumped all the way back and they showed the heart and all your first. So it gives me a chance to kind of look back on the ear and gives me another reason to keep going back and, you know, looking at the classic episodes some more, you know, what we do have. And hopefully someday we'll have more. You yeah, know, we, well, I mean, they had that lovely rediscovery, didn't they, a few years ago. And I, I always think there's, there's a chance that, Someone's going to turn up something. I mean, I, I'm still amazed that all these decades on from that period when they were really 
were bringing in stories that were missing, that we're still able to get stuff that, and you know, if we're not, it, there's, there seems to be scope in this animation. I thought The Power of the Daleks was really splendid. And of course it was great for me, as I say, because um, although as an actor you want to find uh, sort of your own intention through something, having s something with Mike's interpretation, his definitive interpretation of Ben there is a tremendous resource for me. So you know, if they decide to animate them, great, I'll, I'll keep getting them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really do hope they keep animating more of them because it's nice to you know have them back out there to watch, you know, because we have the audios but we don't have the videos, and you know, unfortunately. So, but I just want to thank you again for your time, Elliot. You know, for coming on, and I uh, really appreciate it. And um, you know, give Lisa and all them over there a big finish. My regards. Certainly will. Uh, well, actually, Lisa's over in the states at the moment. She's off Broadway in a show. So go and see Lisa Bauman in the in the roundabout off Broadway. <laughs> 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 You're in the oh, area. Yeah. <laughs> Many thanks, sir. All right, thanks again. Yeah.